Red Hook, Brooklyn, known for its salty dock workers and nefarious characters like Al Capone, but in the midst of all the chaos, there's a brewery known as Six Point. These mad scientists have stretched the imagination as far as they could go, creating some of the world's craziest brews from history. Let's go inside and see what these scientists are cooking up today. The Brewery Show is brought to you by the Ladies of Craft Beer, a community and online resource dedicated to the advocacy of women and diverse beer, home brewing, food and beer, and the Women in Beer interview series. Ladies and men, visit ladiesocb.com and follow us on Twitter at ladiesocb. My name's Shane Welch. I'm the founder and president of Six Point here in Brooklyn, New York. The epicenter of Six Point Brewery, it's in this garage here. So this is where it was founded. Actually, the original room of this brewery is just beyond that white door right there. So this space in here, this other garage space, we took over after a couple years. I am head brewer here at Six Point. Uh, so basically, I brew the beer and sometimes order these other guys around. It's not such a defined position. We're all kind of working in here harmoniously together. As a company, we've been pretty stifled. As you can see, this is a pretty small, tight-knit operation. So what we've been trying to do is like get this company on its own two feet, raise it up, get it strong. And now as we've been maturing, we got a whole bunch of things slated um, to really open up the doors for everyone. And uh, a couple things in the works that I hope to announce in the next one to two years. I started off as a home brewer. I, um, I was inspired by home brewers actually in Burlington, Vermont. I'd visit Vermont. They'd have a lot of uh, home brewing festivals. I'd taste beer and be like, oh wow, you're creating this great stuff at home. I could be saving money and making my own great beer at home. So I learned how to home brew. Um, I home brewed for about two years. At that point, um, I started passing my home brew around, bartenders, friends. Um, a bartender at a bar that I used to frequent said, hey, these Six Point guys are coming down. They're having an anniversary party. Why don't you come down and talk to them? And I said, hey, that sounds great. So uh, I went down there and uh, I just pretty much stalked out the place until they showed up and uh, ran right over to them. And it's like, hey guys, you know, what can I do? Anything I can do, I'll do it for free for however long you want. And uh, I was here next Thursday bleaching the floors. We have a 15 barrel brew house, it's very small. Uh, it's kind of a boutique setup, basic, really basic, simple brew house, very hands on, very labor intensive as you've seen. We have a capacity of like around 4,000 barrels a year and that, that's pushing it. It's gonna be hard to do that much. This right here is where Six Point comes from. So as you can see on this right here, you have a Six Pointed Star, it's a symbol that brewers used to use back in the day to brand their beer as a uh, symbol of purity. It's a symbol of the old uh, Brewers Guild going way back. To this day, you'll see this symbol or a, a variation of this symbol um, on old breweries all over the world. So I thought it would be a good idea to resurrect the meaning of this old symbol and then tweak it to give it a little more relevance to what we're doing. And how we did that is the original Six Point Brewer star actually looks like Star of David. This star right here, which we made up, is a sort of a combination of the nautical star with the original brewer star. You need some type of a navigational tool to help steer you towards just a solid product. No gimmicks, craft, beer. We felt that we can encapsulate that entire message through the, through the star. Ninety percent of brewing is cleaning, so ninety percent of what I do is cleaning. I'm an intern apprentice here at Six Point. He's scrubbing the tanks, scrubbing the floor, washing kegs. Today, you know, pretty much washing kegs most of the day. Bleached uh, floors every time I came here for a, a good eight to ten hours uh, for about two weeks, and then at that point, I graduated onto keg washing. Uh, that was a little more glamorous got off my knees, I could stand for that. Something that has to get done here at the brewery, we do it still to this day, everybody does it. 
Um, we need clean kegs to fill with beer and send out the door. So uh, it's something that's always going. And uh, I did that for, I still do it today. You know, I've been here for about a year and a half. I still watch kegs. One day my buddy came to me and said, oh yeah, I'm homebrewing. And I was like, what? Went over, helped him out, and that was, that was it. It was pure addiction right at, the, right at the very beginning. When I first came here, you know, I, I had some home brewing knowledge, but definitely didn't have a clear idea as to what the big picture was about. Ask a lot of questions, overhear conversations, then you just pick it up. Our doors are open for home brewers and creative folks who want to come down and learn how to make beer. Always have been, always will. We're a small brewery, but behind you is 40,000 pounds of barley malt, so for a home brewer, that's more than you'd ever need. Um, so that, we open our doors to that. They can get 10 pounds here. They you know, just get, get the beers at basically our wholesale cost. Yeast right off the bottom of the tank. We'll hook you up with some hops. But we ask that you bring back a couple samples. You have to come in and present yourself and say, look, I'm a local home brewer. I heard you guys sell ingredients and you better have a couple of bottles of beer with you. It doesn't matter if your stuff is not good, if you're still learning. Like, we'll talk to you, we'll talk you through some of the procedures, and we'll try your beers and, and give feedback. So it's our way of, like, uh, supporting the, the craft. You know, without home brewing, none of us would be here. This, this facility wouldn't even exist. So it's kind of paying homage to that. Perpetuate the trade, I guess. I, I hate when brewing is exclusive, you know, and, and a brewer won't tell you a recipe or something like that. Like, I'll tell you any ingredient, you know, what kind of yeast we use, I'm not worried about anyone stealing our beers, you know. It's also more people can make great beer. To date now, we almost have 90 different beers. Some of them re repeats with a few variations. The four main core flavors that by far and away make up maybe 90 or 95% of the sales. The sweet action, which was brewed on a total whim. It's an old homebrew recipe from back in the college days and it just went from nothing to being our number one seller completely randomly. Um, the Brownstone, which is actually the first beer we ever made here at this facility. It's like an American brown ale with a little roast barley, so it's kind of roasted and hoppy too. The Righteous Ale, which is made with rye malt. We love rye here. We, we use it in several other beers as well. Um, it's like a, what you would call like a rye PA or an American rye PA, but it's got a couple toasted malts in there too and some chocolate malts, give it a little more complexity. And then the Bengali Tiger, which is our interpretation of, a, of an IPA, which I'm drinking right now. You scrub the sand key port, hose it down, connect it to the keg washer, purge, rinse twice, then you run the caustic cycle, then you uh, purge again, rinse three times, then you purge with uh, CO2, and then you close it up and pressurize the CO2. Oh, and label it. Sometimes craft gets this connotation, the term, that you have sort of this homespun enterprise where there's not a lot of attention to the technical detail. We love chemistry, we love taking measurements, we love reading the numbers and the, the spreadsheets and doing testings and stuff like that. So Mad Scientist though is sort of a combination of the two. It's taking a really strong rooted knowledge of science and chemistry and fermentation and brewing and then combining it with a creative element. An element of randomness, an element of a spark of creativity and putting them together. This ongoing series is just sort of our tribute to that, that love of uh, experimentation. Dr. Klinkenstein is sort of this beer that um, when brewers dream at night, you know, they read old brewing books, they, they read about these Stein beers that were popular in the medieval period. Stein beer. Awesome beer, definitely not my brainchild. Uh, something that's been going back since the beginning of German brewers in old Bavaria. They didn't have the technology to bring a massive cauldron up to a rolling boil, so they would put flaming hot rocks on fire into the beer to get it to boil. It was a really fun procedure trying to figure out how to do that. I always thought that that was awesome and it would be really fun to, to, to participate in something like that. We never did it, but then I was like, you know what, we're gonna do this, right? So we decided to 
do an expose on the art of making a Stein beer, and that's where the Klankenstein came from. Totally revolutionize any modern way you do a Stein beer. I mean, I don't, I don't think there was a blueprint for it. Get some big flames that are blowing with gas, heat up some rocks till they're scalding like lava, drop them in uh, the, the kettle, watch little explosions of hot malt flying everywhere. Even if the liquid's at 210 degrees, comparatively to the temperature of the rock, it's cold. If there's a shock to the, to the rock, what's gonna do is it's gonna it's just going to shatter and it can create hot shards of, of, of minerals like flying in your eye. We built a homemade device which was as like a, a galvanized steel rod with a heavy duty chain that could, that could carry the basket from, from the kettle to the burner back and forth. Because it is cool, like it's very, you know, whatever, West Orange County chopper type sh where you're playing with fire and, and metal and blowing stuff up, but at the same time like you got people's lives and safety at stake, and you don't want to encourage anyone to do something stupid. I didn't really think it would add any flavor to the beer, but it really did. When you drink it, you can taste like the, the, the singed or the scorched malt. It's not very um, aggressively flavored in that way, but it, it's definitely there. And it, it has, I swear, it tastes like cotton candy. Like, you, you, you just a little bit, not, not overpowering, but you, when you drink it, you get that, that malt, that cooked malt, like a flash burn or scorched malt. The caramelization of these sugars creating this almost like fluffy toasted marshmallow in, in a rather light beer. It's, it's delicious and uh, it's, it's, a rare, it's a rare find. If you wanted to check out uh, the Klankenstein and the whole process and the story behind it, we actually have it on our YouTube page which is called Six Point Vision. People have been commenting and viewing that and running back about that now for almost a year we posted it. And that's just a great way for you to get an idea of like the energy and the spirit behind that whole process. We've got a pipeline of interesting and fun projects on the horizon from now and at least stack for the next few years. The Mad Scientist series is going to be a good ongoing exploration of these types of beers um, and a good venue for us to release them. Um, but by no means is the Klankenstein the end all be all of our creative pinnacle. You know, we're going to keep it keep rolling. Every time I'm here, I, I'm working, you know, working towards something bigger, learning new stuff. So just, uh, just to kind of keep at that and, uh, you know, maybe move on do a little more brewing, move from cleaning up to brewing, you know, that type of thing. I'm proud to do what I do. Uh, it's a, you know, it's one of the oldest human traditions and I'm proud of that and I'm, I'm proud when I say I'm a brewer. Not many people can be, can take that kind of pride in their job. It's the fact that someone wants to make a web-based television show based on what I do, even though it's kind of mundane at times, that's, it's a good feeling. Never be afraid to take criticism. Um, I think it's, I think it's an, an obstacle that gets in the way of home brewers is ego. They kind of stiff up if they, if they get any criticism. Be open to it. Go to people's opinions that you respect. Other brewers in your town say, hey, here's my home brew. What are you picking up on? What are these flavors? What can I do differently? And that's really going to improve your game. Just keep at it. Keep home brewing. Because uh, every time you home brew, you also learn something new. I want to give a very special invite and uh, acknowledgement to what's going to be best event we've put on to date, not ever, but to date, uh, March 26th here in Brooklyn, New York, live from the Bell House, Six Point, Beer for Beasts. I'm not going to say any more. Don't miss it, though. Six Point Craft Dales is pushing the envelope of what beer making is, digging into the past and some methods that haven't been seen in centuries. If you enjoy their beer, that's good. If you haven't tried it yet, follow the Brewer Star. Thanks for watching The Brewery Show. Until next time. Open a fermentation valve. Our beer is sent through the line. Comes here with pressure. Open this line out to get some of the yeast out. Something for Sam to clean up later. We could check it to see how much yeast is going into our conditioning tank here. 
That looks about good. We'll start off with a nice, slow transfer. Allow our ale to slowly glide in here over the course of about 45 minutes.